A lot of people saying Jody. Yeah, a lot of people are saying Jody. Okay, I'm pro I'm telling you right now, I'm probably not watching the whole two hours. In the year 1980, on Wednesday the 9th of July at exactly 11.54 p.m., a little girl named Jody Ann Arias was born in the city of Salinas, California, and completely unbeknownst to her doting parents, was destined to become one of the most infamous people in the United States of America. Maka W? From what we know about her behavioral sequences, and despite what her defense team would later want you to believe, there's virtually nothing in Jody's childhood that can be linked as a contributing factor to what she would eventually be capable of. The only thing worth mentioning was that she dropped out of high school in the 11th grade to pursue a career in photography, but it went nowhere, so she began working at a hotel restaurant which became her occupation for the next eight years. In February of 2006, at 26 years of age, she began a new job as a salesperson for a network marketing company called Prepaid Legal, and it was through this occupation where she crossed paths with fellow sales representative Travis Alexander, a 28-year-old practicing Mormon from Arizona, who also worked part-time as a motivational speaker. When you get thrown the briefing, they say no, that counts. When you get someone fully exposed and they say no, that counts. Every time you get one of those, cross one off the list. By the time the hundredth one's crossed off the list, you won't be able to spend the money. He was a very charismatic young man, which immediately caught Jody's attention. They met at a business conference in September of 2006 and began a curious relationship from that point forward. To cut a long story short, Jody was in love, and Travis was not. They broke up after just five months, but soon after the split, Jody moved from her grandparents' home in Wairika, California, into an apartment just two blocks from Travis. Does she have lip injections? Or is that just me? Travis's house in Mesa, Arizona. She was at that moment labeled the crazy stalker ex by all of Travis's friends. And although Travis agreed, he would continue having sex with her out of pure convenience. She would show up. Okay, that's already weird. Having sex with her out of... Ugh. The fuck's wrong with you, Travis? Unannounced on countless occasions, sometimes in the middle of the night, and Travis would let her in every time. It became somewhat of a routine and a dysfunctional situation that neither were happy with. Travis, although he enjoyed the sex, essentially wanted her out of his life, while Jody desperately wanted a serious relationship. And going off the myriad of entries in her diary, she firmly held on to the belief that they were meant to be together. In late May of 2008, however, she would ultimately have a change of heart. Travis had a work retreat planned to Cancun, Mexico for July 10th. It was all paid for by his employer and allowed him to take a friend with him. Jody. Like, who does that, though? Do people really do that? When they have an ex, they just have sex with them just because they want to have sex. That's, that's so fucked up. Why? knew about this, and believed, or at the very least hoped, that she would be the one going. Yet in the last week of May, it became known that Travis was taking another woman instead. A Mormon girl by the name of Mimi Hall, someone I'm that Travis had been guy, romantically so interested I've, in for some time. I have no when fucking found idea. Out, it would be safe to assume that she was heartbroken. It would be even safer to assume that she was absolutely enraged. And the collective opinion is that a specific thought process began to emerge in her mind. One that forged a psychological justification for a certain decision. On June 4th, 2008, six days before <laughs> Travis was set to leave for Mexico, Jody would once more show up unannounced. All we know for sure is that they had sex and took explicit pictures of each other using Travis's new camera. At roughly 5 p.m., Travis would get in the shower and Jody would begin taking pictures of him using the same camera. Then, moments after this picture was taken, Jody would stab Travis a total of 27 times. She would also cut his throat and shoot him in the face. During the onslaught, Travis's camera took two accidental photographs. The first was taken as Jody dropped it during the onset of the attack. The second was taken as she kicked it by mistake while moving Travis's body. It showed Jody's foot and a fatally wounded or deceased Travis. The amount of time that passed from the two photographs was 62 seconds. Jody Bruh. then spent an estimated 45 minutes cleaning down the crime. Yo, I'm sorry if I just like fucked up your guys' entire week from that scene to make sure none of her DNA was left behind. This included wiping down the victim's body with a cup of water and a cloth. She also deleted the pictures from Travis's camera before throwing it in the washing machine. She would then drive back out into the desert and leave Travis a voicemail for the purpose of placing herself away from the crime scene and giving herself an alibi. No, it's not TOS. <clears throat> if it's on YouTube, it's not TOS. Jody would then drive to another man's house in Utah by the name of Ryan Burns and stayed the night. He would later testify that nothing seemed off about Jody's behavior, only that they kissed and engaged in sexual intercourse. Travis's body was discovered by Mimi and her friends five days later, the day before they were supposed to leave to Cancun together. The most notable detail of the phone call was that Jody agreed to provide a sample of her DNA. Over the following month, forensics were able to uncover the deleted photos from Travis. Um, do we skip? No booba? Once asked what she was being arrested for in the six minute drive to the local police station. What makes Jody Arias stand out among the many cases in the realm of true crime is the manner in which she attempts to navigate the system. She seems to believe that if she presents herself in a certain way and adopts a very specific character with very specific traits, it will give her the best chance at evading the consequences of her actions. In her mind, this character is a soft spoken, sweet natured, God fearing individual, yet to everyone else, is quite possibly the most universally annoying person to ever abide Dude. in. I'm sorry. It's so goddamn annoying when, like, criminals and people who murder people just go to, like, 
I'm, 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 I'm with Jesus now. I'm a God-fearing, hard-working, a, a compact driver. I, I drive a tractor. I love Jesus. I fucking hate when, like, dude, it happens all the time. When people murder people, when they do something terrible, they're like, I'm, I'm with God now. Jesus, I love him. He's my, he's my savior. I love him. I'm, I'm with him now. I, I, I do no wrong no more. I am a loving person. Mm, Jesus, fuck off. In the history of existence. Oh yeah, the devil made me do it. Are the party rockers in the house tonight? Are they in uh, with us? Are the party rockers with us right now? Wait, I missed it. Wait, what? Yeah, she she's she's she takes on a personality of like someone who's super positive and religious. Yeah. In the next moment, Jody will hear Detective Flores approaching the room. She will then abruptly place her head on the table to make it appear as if she's sleeping. She will now notice the detective has instead walked past the room and then revert back to her regular sitting position. For whatever reason, Jody wants to appear as if she's in a far calmer state than she actually is. She wants the detective to believe that she's relaxed enough to doze off, when she is in fact extremely alert and anticipating his arrival. Do people really not think that they're always recorded when they're... I, like, it, do they really not think that? When, when they're... Like, obviously, they're going to be always recorded when they literally just murdered someone. She places her head back on the table to feign a placid state once more, and you'll notice her left shoulder hovers in what looks like a very uncomfortable position for just over a minute. She then hears the external door open, at which point she takes a deep breath and then fully rests onto the table. Can I get this off you? Yeah. Do you remember me? Of course I do. <clears throat> I traveled all the way up here to talk to you. Because... Yeah, I've been working on Travis's case ever since it happened, mm -hmm. okay? And I know exactly when it happened, when he was killed. I know a lot of details. And just recently, we found quite a bit of evidence. And I'll discuss that with you. The main thing that I'm looking for, though, is answers on why certain things happened, why they went so far. And yeah, she, she's wacko. Your statements. Okay. <clears throat> um, Dude, just lock her up right now, bro. Like, hey, I, I'm pretty sure you, you killed your your ex-boyfriend oh okay tell me about it tell me about it stud tell me tell me more tell me more about how i killed, <laughs> I killed my ex-boyfriend a lot of details on this case that haven't been released to to the public and not even to travis's family and those details are known only by us and the person who did it okay and, and that's one of the reasons i'm here because i believe that you know some of these details okay. and i think you can help us i would love to help you in any way that i can okay I don't want to pressure you. Is this recorded at all? Or um, should we? I, I, don't, I, don't I don't know, know if there's know. a recording or something. I don't know if these are voice recorders. I noticed them. I think they have video. They have audio I don't think they're, batteries or what? I don't think they're on. Hindsight allows us to recognize this is simply an attempt to appear innocent. She seems to think that if she appears confident enough to recommend the use of an outdated voice recorder, that it will seem as though she has nothing to hide in the eyes of the detective. But it's just bizarre. If the detective wasn't already certain of Jody's guilt, he would most certainly. Is she that stupid? Is she that dumb? What? I, I saw these over here. We could record ourselves. Dude, what? These people are so stupid. What? Become suspicious at this moment. She she thought that uh, they weren't recording, so there were recorders behind her. It's like, oh, we could use one of these to record ourselves to, like, make her look less guilty. Like, do, do are people that dumb that they don't realize that obviously they're going to be recorded the entire time? Okay. Yeah, I haven't touched those or anything, but uh, oh, okay. I mean, they're not on, so what I want to do is just get to the bottom of it. Everybody wants to know, okay? And I I'm sorry, freaking JCS criminal psychology. Are you trying to make a meme over here, bro? You you trying to meme out over here, dude? Making it look like a. <laughs> That's pretty good, though. That's pretty good. I'll give it to him. That's pretty good. 
you know, somebody asks you some questions, you can voluntarily answer them if you want. Okay, is that cool? Yeah, yes. Fine. There was some questions about you being. Um, well, let's, let's start with this. What have you been up to since um, since Travis's death? What, what have you been doing? Um, well, I've been working. Mm -hmm. I haven't been really working in prepaid legal. There's not a whole lot um, here in this marketplace, which is it's kind of small here. It's small here, and really that, sh that could be seen as an opportunity yeah. um, rather than um, a hindrance, because that just means the market is, is untapped in a large way. So I could have if I wanted to, but I have, I'm kind of like a deer in headlights when it comes to prepaid legal. I kind of have a fear of just approaching people. Mm -hmm. Um, You'll come to notice that Jody will go off on these unrelated tangents anytime she has the slightest chance to do so. It's a recurring theme in interrogations for when the suspect is facing serious charges. And the common theory is that it's an attempt at gaining a momentary escape from what is likely the most terrifying moment of their life. And this particular tangent was about the local climate and multi-level marketing. But she'll also ramble about photography, religion, relationships, spirituality, household pets, her ex-boyfriends, road trips, hitchhiking, designer clothing, and computer virus software. Jesus Christ, dude. Like, just lock her up, dude. It's been 14 minutes, and I've sped it up. Lock her up, dude. Like, game over. Like, that's it. There's no reason to go any further. Like, she's calm. She's vibing. She's chill. She's not even talking about the situation at hand, bro. She's, like, going off on tangents. Like, just... Lock her up, dude. This is kind of a gray area. The detective knows she'll happily trail off until the morning Talking comes, about so Facebook. he cuts her off and locks her into the situation at hand. I you know, talk to a lot of people, and everybody's pointing a finger at you. You know, everybody is saying, I don't understand what happened to Travis. I don't know who killed him. But you need to look at Jody. <laughs> yeah, it must be hard to tell your new BF that you murdered your ex. Are the correct one. Hey, uh, honey, like, I, I really need to get this off my chest. Um... You know my ex-boyfriend? I possibly stabbed him 27 times in the chest and disposed of his body in the dumpster. I hope that's okay. I know it's weird, but maybe we can work through it? But you were still having a sexual relationship, which, this you know, know about I had to kill him because I'm a no, Gemini. <laughs> That shouldn't have made me laugh that much. <laughs> Sorry, hun, I had to kill him because he was a Gemini. Yeah. Just, we just I'm didn't match up. His, how he's remembered as well. And just for the purpose of integrated context, at Jody's trial, she would label Travis a sexual deviant, a domestic abuser, and a pedophile. He he truly had feelings what? for you. And for some reason, he felt that the relationship between you and him was somewhat unhealthy, but he couldn't stop it. And I assume that's probably maybe the same way you felt mm -hmm. about him, or... It's probably, Maybe you didn't understand why he didn't believe it was healthy. No, I, I didn't think it was healthy either, spiritually at least, and probably emotionally, but mostly spiritually, and I think that kind of, once you have something that's not healthy spiritually, it filters through all aspects of your life. Her dialogue alters from spirituality to her work history, and then to her finances before moving- Dude, fuck, fuck you, you stupid bitch. Spiritually? Every goddamn stupid person who does something terrible, like murder someone, always spiritual. Jesus, God, religion, spiritual. Fuck you. It's kind of silly, but I used to always joke that um, regardless of what the Bible says, and yes, I'm Christian, I just live my life by the Ten Commandments, and that's my, those are my rules. Oh, fuck you, you stupid bitch. Oh, I hate that. Oh, I hate it so much, dude. I don't know why it's such like an annoying thing for me. Like, it pisses me off so much when people do that. It's like, the, like do you think that's going to get you out of it? Do you think saying that you love Jesus is just going to get you out of the situation, dude? Fuck you. The fake tears, too. Ugh. Ugh. It makes me feel gross. Yeah, she's, like, this is the thing. They only bring up religion when they do something bad. Because they think it's like, it's just going to get them out of it, you know? Um. Jody is desperately trying to make it appear as though her and Travis were on good terms, but this is just overkill. Jody was labeled a crazy stalker ex by all of Travis's friends and even Travis himself. The idea that he would show and then discuss any potential future romances with Jody is ridiculous. And I don't know why not. I mean, I see you. You're 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 a wonderful girl. You're you know you're struggling. You're, you're trying to, to to make your way through life, and I don't see why you guys couldn't have made it. I think you know? we're just we have we have very many different philosophies mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, we would argue about the dumbest yeah, things, and like, there were so many times I just couldn't wrap my mind around what he would, I could, but, but I would try to get him to do the same for me. Like, there was a time when I broke down on the way to- Dude, she's straight, she's straight venting right now, dude. Like, I'm pretty sure she vented right in front of the detective, and he saw it. 
about eight months. And you I saw it. Car got a flat tire, so I had the time roadside assistance because my car was still under warranty. And they pulled, they went to take the car and to change the tire. I realized that when they sold me the car, they didn't give me the wheel lock key. Um, and I was kind of hungry. It was dinner time. It was seven thirty-eight, and it was dark because it's January. Um, and the tow truck guy said, you know, there's a Denny's two blocks down here, and there's a Jack in the Box there, and he was driving me to the motel. I said, is there an IHOP around? Because I really like IHOP. He's like, yeah, but it's kind of like five miles back in the other direction. I was like, oh, okay. He's like, I can drive you there if you want. And I was like, he's like a short Mexican guy, and he seemed really harmless. And I was like, uh, okay. And he, you know, and I asked him about his life, and he had a wife and kids, and so he wasn't flirting. The travels of Jody and the sweet Mexican continues on for another two minutes. The detective then brings Jody's attention. The travels of Jody and the sweet Mexican is that like, is like a is that like a freaking movie title? What is happening? Like, what is going? Why are we? Why is she talking about traveling with a Mexican to an IHOP? What the? What the? What the hell, dude? What is going on? Her, her adventures with a sweet Mexican. Yeah, I know he was taking me. I didn't know that. I think that's awesome, actually. Right, dude. Like. JCS, bro. It feels, I'm not going to lie. It feels weird adding memes to this. But I like it. I liked that he added that there. That was, that was good. I like it. There's a strip that you took. Because they're saying that you left. She needs to till Thursday. Wednesday. Some trucks was killed. I did not go near his house. Isn't there... I pulled your cell records. Your cell phone was turned off. Dude, she Turn just got rolled yeah. right there. Well, I didn't turn it off physically, but it died. And then magically, you, you found it. your charger here? It was it was under the, act under the seat of the passenger side. And it was when I was... When you were lost, you couldn't have maybe pulled over and found it? Or? Well, I did find Dude, it. Dude, get I fucked. I when I was lost. Detective Flores explains to Jody multiple times over how the trip doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And whether it's feigned naivety or that she literally doesn't understand the concept of time and distance, she pretends to be confused by the allegation rather than actually confront it. This goes on for three minutes before the detective confronts Jody with the evidence of the photographs on Travis's camera. But I don't think you're being completely honest with me about, about that trip. I honestly got lost. It's, it's bad timing. Were you at Travis's house on Wednesday? Absolutely not. Yikes. I was nowhere near Mesa. I was nowhere near no. Phoenix. I wasn't even close to him. Um, what if I could show you proof you were there? Well, Will that change your mind? I wasn't there. You can be honest with me, Joey. I was not at Travis's house. I was not. You were at Travis's house. You guys had a sexual encounter, which there's pictures. And I know you know there's pictures because I have them. I will show them to you. Boom. Okay. So. Boom. What I'm asking you is get you fucked. With me. I know you were there. She I'm must have hit some plot me. holes on her trip. <laughs> Can we get some fucking, like, Bionic 4 balls just for that fucking... That was an own right there. She must have hit some plot holes on her trip. That was fucking good. And I have pictures of you in Travis's bedroom with Travis. Pictures of him. And it's obvious you guys are having sex. Taking photos of each other and they're dated and time stamped on the day he died are you sure it's me i mean that because i Joey, was not there it's you and you know it's you i know all the details of this case the only thing i don't know is why why did you choose to go visit travis that day this man is sherlock why reed incarnated why did you travis Joey? you did you heard him Big Pog, dude. Here. She's done. Dunzo. Dude, what is the rest for? We're 30 minutes in and she got caught. Why is there an hour and a half longer? What more? What? 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 Do about this. I can just arrest you and throw you in jail, but I want to know why. Why did you do this to him? I wouldn't hurt Travis. He's done so much for me. It gets so crazier for real? But it's over. Could it have been like what from the Your image is not important right now. Saving the rest of your life is. Listen, if I'm found guilty, I don't have a life. I'm not guilty. I didn't hurt Travis. If I hurt Travis, if I killed Travis, I would beg for the death. So I assume the reason it keeps going is because she just won't give up. Even though there's like crazy amount of evidence. I assume that's why it continues on. Is because she's probably just goes wacko mode 
and won't it just won't give up it just seems so impossible i want to see it i want to know i mean i'm not like i'm not a murderer but i guess if i were to do that i would wear gloves or you know something okay let's say for a second that i did and i say i did it i mean the motive is there the jealousy issue but i wasn't i wouldn't even say i was jealous i mean there, I mean, there may have been some jealousy there but and what is I think it? If what anyone, causes this i think if you know, if anyone, maybe Travis was jealous, but <clears throat> that's not what everybody else says. I can prove it with there. Yikes! I can prove it. Cry my I passion. Is, I don't have answers on why it happened, or you know, maybe something just got out of hand. I maybe just... yeah, you don't go in and be like, "Yo, okay, hypothetically, if I did do this, you know, you <laughs> you don't go in while you're guilty. But like, okay, let's say I did, just for a second. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. She. Uh oh. She's going wacko mode. Remember him? Yeah. See you naked. Yeah. 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 What kind of question is that? Is he naked? In the shower? Do, do you have a picture of his penis? Like I sure. I, I, I know he's dead. Okay, and I know I killed him. But do you have the picture of his dick? I need to know. There's no doubt in my mind that you did this. None. So you can go and take your blue in the face and tell me you weren't there. You had nothing to do with it. I won't believe you. I want to know why. That's, it's killing me inside. That's I don't know why. Like, there's no reason for it. There's no reason why. There's no reason I would ever want to hurt him. And I have a solid right. case against you. And I can present it to the judge. Why? As cold as, as, as it is. Dude, now. honestly, Chad, I just wish that freaking detective would come, <laughs> come out of nowhere. Why? Why'd you do it, Jody? <laughs> why? I don't know why she did it. It's my favorite YouTube channel now. Hell yeah. Judge. Thank you, Wildside Canada. With your response. If I don't guilty, what happens? You'll have to pay the price. Well, what's the price? I don't know. Don't you know what the sentences are? The sentences are carried for something. That made me cringe a bit, Sue. How old you are? It depends on the type of crime. It depends on whether... The other detective would have mentally and destroyed her. All he would do, <laughs> all he would do, is just go up to her. Why, Jody? Why'd you do it? Why? Just continuously do that. He would destroy her, dude. Is at least coming clean. But somebody doesn't come clean. I don't see any remorse. This judge gets it. Judge, sorry, detective. This detective gets it. The last dude. Was like I kn I know you you hurt I know you feel for this no no this guy's like I know you feel no remorse I like I know it I know you don't give a fuck that you killed him you know it, yeah most murderers don't that's why I don't understand why that last dude was literally just like look man you're a good guy I know you probably care about this per uh, come on there's no backing up to yesterday there's no backing up to that day it's already happened. And unfortunately, you're going to have to face the consequences. Um, you know, if, if I did that, <clears throat> I would, I'd be fully ready to face the consequences. Um, I'm not really for things like, you know, I'm all for the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. Oh okay? my god. Ten Commandments, dude? Like, who, who even, like, honestly, even if you're Christian, who brings up the Ten Commandments? Like, legitimately. Like, who, who actually, I'm, I'm all by the Ten Commandments, like, who, who the fuck does that? Like even even if you were like a devout religious person, I I like I I know devout religious person. They never spout. Well, I'm all about the Ten Commandments. That's me. <laughs> Ten Commandments and me, we get along very well. Thou shalt not kill, but unless you're in a shower, yeah, unless penis. Travis has done a lot for me, and I wouldn't hurt him. He introduced the gospel to me. Why is everybody saying that you're capable of hurting him? Everybody says it. Stop it. So don't tell me that you're not capable. Stop bringing that up. Spiders. I kicked a dog once. I was a freshman in high school. Dude, shut up, you stupid bitch. I, I kicked a dog once. I don't, I don't know. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't know what was wrong with me. I just, I was, I was out of line. I kicked a dog one time. Dude, like, Rotten prison, bro. Like, fuck you. And I love, love, love animals. 
and one we had this dog his name was doggy boy and my parents until this dog they his name was doggy boy dude come up with a better story i had a dog his name was doggy boy <laughs> what the fuck no no person on this planet would name their dog doggy boy fucking doggy boy <laughs> what they have now have never been able to and i don't mean just them we as a family have never been able to care for a dog properly as far as giving attention and take for walks and be consistent to save you the oncoming ramble about doggy boy the dog she likes thank you with her foot for tearing open the trash and she's felt so bad ever since that it changed her entire worldview on the animal kingdom she now apologizes to the dog through the detective who's conducting her interrogation for first degree murder <laughs> he loves the dog and boy. To him. i know it sounds weird my relationship with animals it's kind of like they're like people too you know, they have souls what you need to do is we need to apologize to Travis. She just refused. Yeah, I can't help you anymore. This is hilarious, I'll be honest. Fucking idiot. Is it because I'm not crying? No. It's not because of that. What is it? I mean, I'm not going to change how I act. No, obviously she's going to change. She, she, she's trying to figure out what she can do. to. <laughs> okay, detective who's trying, who literally has pure evidence. What do you want me to do to convince you? Huh? What, what do I need to, you want me to cry? What, 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 tell me what I need to do to prove to you. <laughs> like, what an idiot. Look, I know I'm guilty and all, but okay, say if I convince you that I wasn't guilty. What do I need to do to do that? Tell me right now. I need to know. <laughs> he just totally this seems to be the moment Jody fully confronts the reality of her situation. <clears throat> the anguish she has over her own fate will become visible, yet she will now disguise this anguish as grief over Travis's death. She does this by posing a question. How many times was Travis stabbed? More than I will remember. <laughs> I'm caught. I you got me. me. Dude, are we doing a sing review of a fucking murderer right now? Papega? Did she got the Papega brain? What's going on? <laughs> he knows our need. Jody was then taken to the county jail and charged with the murder of Travis Alexander. She stayed there overnight and it would be a total of 16 hours before she was taken back to the Siskiyou County Sheriff's Office. Her second interrogation commenced at approximately 9.30 a.m. Bruh. Now it's getting weird. Holy shit. Just remember in the winter. Like, she, I feel like she could use a little bit more of her diaphragm, you know? You know, get a little bit more air out there, you know? Stupid fucking bitch. The game plan for this second interrogation will be a lot more strategic. Investigators will have studied the footage the day prior and will now have a greater understanding of Jody's personality. The initial tactic is for Detective Blaney to criticize and berate the suspect's character while simultaneously reinforcing fear and apprehension. She makes it very clear from the offset that the suspect's fabricated naivety and sickly sweet persona will not work on this occasion, and Jody's self-esteem will be broken down in a manner that would typically be considered bullying or abuse under different circumstances. This is done so that when Detective Flores returns, it will be a welcome relief and an immediate report. It's like the previous instance of those guys bullying the one dude, except this time it's going to work. You know, because last time it's just, why? Why'd you do it? This time it's actually going to work. Then be attained, which in turn will make the suspect far more likely to cooperate. It's a derivative of good cop, bad cop, and the two investigators execute this technique yes. in a near perfect manner. Detective Bullying, Blaney's crime with the suspect go, is essentially dude. a non. There's no question in my mind or any of the other investigators' mind um, that you were the person that took Travis's life. But what I need to know, or what I'd like to know, and give you the opportunity to do, is determine whether you know, you're know you a, a cold-blooded, cold-hearted um, murderer, 
who's lied to this guy? Or are you somebody that got caught up in circumstances and things got out of control? When this Where's the bullying? Um, and, and it will. Bully. They'll go to the media. Do you want to be portrayed as that cold-blooded, cold-hearted murderer? Because it, the media loves that. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to give you a chance to... Bring in the bully! Right. You know? Send, cyber bully her! You know? Show the families that you do have do something. Remorse. But when you continue to deny, 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 when it's obvious that, that that's not the case, you appear to be... I go to Facebook and call her names. Killer. And things are going to start Make fun of her hair. For you. Pause, champ. Okay, I'm Jody is sorry. clearly exhausted and terrified. She at this moment was being observed by both Detective Blaney and Detective Flores in another room. And they even contemplated having Detective Flores enter at this moment. They ultimately decided against it, however, and Detective Blaney re-enters the room to maximize this state of dejection. The pressure will now be increased to a... Dude, this is the time to attack. Alright? Go at her. Call her names. Come on. <laughs> Bullier. Let's go. Literable degree. How do you feel about Travis? You only respond to my questions. If I murdered Travis, I would Travis. be very remorseful. I think that I, I've gotten the wrong picture of you. I think that, you know, you know, maybe I was wrong. Maybe maybe you are that cold-blooded person um, that they're trying to portray. And, um, you know, yeah. I'm just really yeah. confused. I just, at this point, you know, I, maybe you're right. Maybe there isn't anything that you can do to help yourself. Um, you know, I- Tell her they're gonna have sex with your mom, come on. Say something. Maybe you're not as intelligent as I thought you were. Yeah! Maybe I was wrong. Yeah! Get her. I don't know what else to, to do for you here, Jody. I'm kind of at the end of, of my rope. I was, <laughs> you're not going to get a whole lot of people that are trying to help you out along the way um, beyond this point. And what I'm hearing is somebody who doesn't give a rip about what happened. I'm hearing somebody that's worried about money, your appearance, everything about you. Yeah. I don't hear anything about Travis yeah. unless you're specifically asked. How do you think that looks? <clears throat> listen, I, I don't care so much. No, you about listen. You, you are not grasping the reality here, Jody. You are acting like the, the person that I portrayed, the ugly, cold-blooded murderer. Every time Jody breaks down, Oh, she called her ugly! The detective immediately focuses on Travis's family. She makes it abundantly clear that she has absolutely no sympathy for the suspect, despite her best efforts. I know Travis's family is struggling with why, and that would be the one thing that would give them closure. She's they going sicko mode. like you, but I think that they would be appreciative of why their son's life was taken. I know if it was my child, that's what I would want. And I know that you're not a mother, but all women have those mothering instincts within them. And I think that you can understand that, what I'm saying. Was I off base, Jody? Oh, here comes the tears. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Dude don't, dude, don't give her a fucking Kleenex. Let her nose run down her face, bro. Let her snot all into her mouth let it just envelop her face dude don't give her a tissue come on i understand that you're a very private person everybody has said that and that's <laughs> glaringly apparent but all your business is going to be out in the open right now i got There's caught no to hide from anymore. oh it's no really... do you think at this point that your pride matters more than travis's family's grief <laughs> this is your chance to make at least something right even if it's on a small scale, it's a big deal to his folks. This is your opportunity to make right on some of your selfishness. I wasn't angry at Travis. Everyone keeps saying whoever did this was so angry. Then what were you? Oh my god. <laughs> were you jealous? She's not gonna admit it, is she? Was he expecting you to come over that day? <laughs> he wanted me to. I told him I wasn't going to. So was it a surprise that you actually showed up? Jody prepares to set off on another tangent about photography, but gets shut down right away. The detective doesn't allow her thoughts to keep wandering off Good. on something unrelated as a means for attaining a brief distraction from reality. I got pictures of him on shading, and then he was already worried about that. Well... Jody, when you say things like that, it's obvious to me that you don't want to do the right thing for the family. You don't want to um, unburden yourself. You don't want to give them closure. Um, yeah. And you're jerking my chain. Yeah. And I don't appreciate my chain being jerked. I'm tired of playing games. I'm tired of skirting around it. I thought that it would be easier for you to talk to a woman. Finally, to say a detective who said like this goes at her. Unless you're willing to give me something, then I can't do anything for you. After today, things are going to go so fast for you. You're going to be totally out of control of the situation. 
the wheels of justice will start turning. I understand that you're afraid and that you're <clears throat> horrified about that person within you that could do something like that. But it happened and it's a done deal and you did. At least you can do is tell the family how it happened so they can understand why. I mean, do you think you're going to get this opportunity again? To sit down and just have a free-form discussion? There's not going to be any situation or place that's going to make it any easier for you. This is as good as it gets for you right now. Would you pulling all the plus four cards on Jody's um, ass. If you do, you know, that's that's fine. And I'm sure that he'd be willing to talk with you again. Or would you rather continue talking with me? It's up to you. She's been sitting on Uno for fucking hours, dude. I don't know playing with Jody. Like, Literally just playing with her. Um, you know, trying to figure out how you can save your own skin here. Don't you think that it's going to make just a little bit of difference inside yourself? As far as that closure goes, if you know that the family at least has something. And if you're not going to do that today with me right now, I'm just going to send you back across the street. <laughs> I just, she just, want, like, that, that'd be hilarious. Like he says, oh, they start bullying and they walk in. You're ugly. You're just, you're fat and disgusting. You're fucking trash. Just. Start berating her. Allows for extended periods of silence. Only Jody will know for sure what she was thinking. Yet Starts climbing on the walls. Just becomes Spider-Man. These moments. Just trying to think. Mic stand, dude. Happened to me today from here on out. If I just told you every single detail that I know, and I gave you a confession, nothing else changes. It just speeds up the process. It's kind of, it's all really blurry. It really is blurry. It's all a blur. Can I please see those photos? Why did you tell the camera in the washing machine? We found blood in the downstairs bathroom where somebody had tried to wash their hands. There's blood on the outside of the washing machine. There's, there's little things that give us clues to what you were doing afterward. Everybody said he just leaves the doors open when, he, when he's home. Trust yes. everybody. Um, have you ever seen the movie The Secret? I don't think so. This was the cue for Jody's next series of insufferable rambles. The detective valiantly endures this for the next 31 minutes to lower her guard. I used to go to sleep at night, I would hear gunshots. We weren't at that neighborhood, but our neighborhood, a neighborhood, another neighborhood, that wasn't that great, and gunshots scary. And there were, because Salinas is agricultural, and there were a lot of fields, and I used to think that there were hunters in the field for dogs. They were swinging by a pickup baby, <laughs> and I wasn't there, I don't think, no, that whatever, something. I've never been in doubt, I've never been through the temple, but from what I understand, I think that's such a sacred place, and, and meditating there and being there will help to give you further insight about where. There were three fears. One was handguns, which is one of the reasons I got a gun. There was a CHP here in town that said he would take me on code target practicing, and I went to the sporting. Hey, what would happen if I confess? Hey, so you know about this movie called Secret? Well, let me tell you the entire plot for 30 minutes. Bro, she's venting. Like, just handcuff her, bro. She already vented. Like, there's no reason to have dialogue. She's vented. She's gone, dude. She vented. She murdered the dude. We had an emergency meeting. We're in the emergency meeting. Just cuff her and get her out of here. Like, wh what? Why is there still an hour left? What more is there? Is it really all in the room? Oh, no. Okay. It's it's the court case. Is it, is it the court case? It's orange, guys. Vote orange. Orange is sus. Orange is sus. Several times to see what you had, and they were all in the five or six hundred dollar range. Keep watching. Okay, so it's worth it. You're telling me it's worth it's worth keep watching. Okay, fine. I'll trust you. Okay, so it's too expensive, but then there was this one. It was cheap. Jody's dialogue eventually winds up on the subject of Travis and how Travis was private about the shower. The detective seizes the moment to catch Jody off guard. He suddenly poses a highly incriminating question in a jokingly manner. He was very private about the shower, like we. Is that why you were taking pictures of him in the shower? No, no. <laughs> she doesn't deny she was there, only that she wasn't taking the pictures for that particular reason. She doesn't refute what is essentially an accusation, only a part of the context within it. This seems to be the moment where Jody realizes the Cover. holes in her story are beyond repair. She has to admit she was at least at the scene of the crime, and will now start to scramble her thoughts to garner the most self-preserving storyline. Trying to get back there. No, um... What went wrong? Dude, she got... Dude. Dude, boom, like bomb dropped. She got rolled, dude. Like that one phrase, like destroyed, absolutely dominated. Dude, do? I still kind of want that guy to come in and just start yelling why. I'm not going to lie. I want that. Why'd you do it? I kind of miss that guy. I'm not going to lie. 
Why? Why, Jody? Why? I miss that guy. <clears throat> Did you plan on doing that the whole time? I don't believe you planned it. Jody. Please. I can't. Why not? Did someone catch you there? Was someone not expecting you to be there? <clears throat> What kind of answer is that? Let me see my car. Then who was it? I don't know. Listen, I will. I can tell you. Smell on the sus sauce. I can tell you everything that I know or that I remember. Okay. What do you remember? What was that? Listen, I will. I can tell you. What was that noise? I can tell you everything that I know or that I remember. Okay. What do you remember? Listen, I will. I can tell you. I can tell you everything that I know or that I remember. Uh, just someone in the background saying, uh oh? What the fuck? Okay. What uh oh. Is there any way I can see those pictures? I just. No, no, yeah, I guess from the I outside? I don't know. <laughs> You need to start letting me know what happened. I almost dropped something. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Just walking past someone who... Oh, oh, drop something. You're telling me that some other people were It's there. a ghost of trap. Dear yeah, God, shower. don't be that morbid. I don't remember him. If, he, like, if this is his shower and the sink is over here, I was like right here taking pictures. And I don't really know what happened after that. Exactly. Except I think he was shot. Where were you? Um, if this is his shower, I'm just sitting here, I was like, well, if this is his shower, I'm sitting here, I was like right here on my knees, and his bathtub was right here, and I was taking him here, and I was just going through the pictures, and I heard this loud ring, and so you I killed don't really remember, except Travis was screaming. Okay, so, don't, is she literally saying, oh, I was there taking pictures, but someone shot him, and my ears rang, don't know who it was. Is that really what she's going for here? Is she really trying to do that? Uh oh. I think I got knocked out, but I don't think it was that long. And there were two people there, and. What'd you say? Um. I remember putting my hand on his back because he was on his, all four of his knees. He was like on his knees like this, doing something like this. All four of his knees? Know. He has I, four I like, knees? I was like, are you okay? What's going on? What's going on? He's like, go get help. Go get help. And I said, okay. And I turned around. There were two people there. One was a guy and one was a girl. I, I could, couldn't tell that at first, but I could just see one was a girl. And I see the other was a guy because they're Bill. So, dude, it's so funny, dude. Like, if this is a real situation, that's like something, boom, instantly would have said. But now, all, after two days of being there, now that she got caught and found out she was there, now she's making up this dumbass bullshit. And then there was this, <clears throat> Travis was screaming the whole time. He wasn't screaming like a girl, he was just like, like he was in. <laughs> that was pretty good. Someone shot him and my ears were ringing. The only thing I could do was just stab him 27 times. Oh, Pain, dumb bitch. Like, like, oh, you know. What happened, Jody? What did you see? <laughs> I took him out like a little bitch. <laughs> I ran. He was still like, conscious and still alive. And, um, and you just left him there? No, I, I ran into the closet and he stopped me. And he didn't touch me. He was just held the gun to my head and he was like, you don't go anywhere. And he told, he told me to go finish it. I didn't see. He told me to stay there and not to move. And where was that in the closet? No, it was um. Oh. She describes that the male stopped her from leaving, and then goes into detail about how her phone wasn't charged and how she Dude, forgot her phone charger. She she's then describes going how she valiantly all tried to save Travis from the female attacker. For this. She was over him, and I just rushed her and I pushed her. In the next moment, she will state that the assailant comes back when she never went anywhere to begin with. Um, I I got Travis, and he wasn't like standing up really. He wasn't really doing much, and I was, and he was, I was trying to get him, and she came back. I got him kind of far, like right here. She came back. He was starting to just get weaker and weaker. Oh my God, she's. 
<laughs> this is again. this is actually. Re- and she said that um, she said they they need to do like. Work. How do people think this is going to work? Like do oh my god how this is insanity, dude. Like I know she obviously she's fucking whacked out of her mind, but like what? Um, do me too because um because it was there and he's like no that's not why we're here pretend to fall asleep on her that would be epic yeah i mean there was definitely aggression as far as i mean i don't know what you define aggression but like i was there was definitely a sternness so it seemed like they knew him obviously yeah but he didn't seem to know them i mean he was a little out of it plus they had masks on casting but he didn't express any kind of recognition i could talk the detective takes her back to the moment she tried to save Travis from the female attacker. Um, so I wasn't sure. I just knew I had to hold on to her hands because she had a knife. What hand did she have? She, she had it in this hand, but well, her right, I guess. So. Her right. I just said, "Come on, come on." You know, he was naked, but I didn't care. Just come on. And he's like, "I can't." I said, "Come on." He's like, "I can't feel my legs." Jody had obviously seen a lot of bad movies. Bear in mind, this conversation she had with Travis was supposedly happening as she was simultaneously fighting off a knife-wielding attacker. She glosses over the struggle, and she somehow ends up outside the bathroom. The two assailants are now inside the bathroom, arguing with each other about Jody's fate. She hasn't stated whether Travis is alive or dead at this point. It wasn't like super yelling, it was kind of like hushed, but mm-hmm. intense. Like, you need to do that. Shut up. It's not over here. Things like that. The male assailant then takes Jody's registration out of her wallet and looks at her dress. He said, You ever, ever, ever say anything about this <laughs> yo i know you literally just watched us murder this guy if you ever tell anyone about this we're coming after you what a fucking idiot dude 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 imagine if like criminals were actually like that like, yo, I know I just murdered your boyfriend, but, like, if you tell anyone that I did this, you're fucked. <laughs> what? To my family, same way, and me, and I didn't care so much about me at that point. He said, you need to leave, and I'll be calling you, buddy. I know you say anything. He's only giving you one chance. And she said she's going to rat us off. She's going to say something, and he was like, shut up. He's like, you get one chance. Jody then leaves in her car. She, of course, doesn't mention the fact that she then left Travis a voicemail to give herself an alibi for not being there. I was really scared. Okay. I was really freaked out of my mind. Okay. I don't believe you. <laughs> but I came in here hoping that you would tell me the truth. Dude. Oh, dude, I love these detectives. Yeah, 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 I don't believe you. <laughs> dude, she, he... It's so good because he just let her go. Like, he just let her go for, like, fucking an hour after everything. Yep. Don't believe you. Sorry. Instantly destroyed. (laughs) I think he was just enjoying it, honestly. He's like, "Uh uh-huh, that's great. Yep. Don't believe you, though. That's really all I needed. Sorry. Don't roll the tape yet. (laughs) Why was he a big traveling companion? Oh, he was a great traveling companion for many reasons. Um, traveling with Travis was kind of like traveling with your own personal comedian and our serenader. Jody not only stuck with her story about the assassination squad, she doubled down and agreed to every media request that came her way. She also stuck with a soft-spoken, sweet-natured, Jesus-loving character that wouldn't hurt spiders, let alone human beings. But she once again fails to realize this fake disposition doesn't match the situation whatsoever. If you were sitting in a squalid jail, wrongfully wow. accused of murder, and as a result facing life in prison or even the death penalty, you wouldn't be acting what like this. What did she pull out of the trash? come across as the innocent girl next door, she just looks like a terrifying lunatic. Uh-huh. Oh, dude, can someone, dude, like, can someone just, like, punch her in the face, dude? Can we make that a new rule for criminals who, like, murder people, especially, like, really awfully murder people? Can we just, like, put them in a room with, like, an MMA professional and just, like, fucking go ham, dude? Just go ham, man. Like, on the brink of death, dude. Fuck these people. Oh, my God. 
Like I saw this video uh, of like, uh, it was a uh, dude getting. Uh, it was it was a court case about this dude who like sexually did uh, like basically awful things to this guy's daughter, and this this dude is like he stood up and he's like, "Hey, uh, can I just get five minutes in a room alone with that guy? That's like you don't have to put him in jail." Don't have to do anything. He could go free. Just give me five minutes in a room alone with that guy. Can we make that a new thing? Like, just fucking wail on these people, man. Like, go ham. Like, come on, dude. I feel like that should be a thing. That, that, that shit, like, when it comes to murder, dude, like, these people should get fucked up. Thing. Um, I would be shaking in my boots right now if, if I had to answer God for such a heinous crime. Jody Arias <clears throat> killed Travis Alexander. There is no question about it. This is Jody's defense team, and what you just saw was the very beginning of their opening statement on the first day of her trial. Oh, this is Jody's defense team. <laughs> just start out, yo, she killed him, no doubt about it. <laughs> she was scared. Scared about what had happened, and scared about what she had done. She had absolutely no experience with police interrogation before. You don't say. And so when they talked to her, she wasn't always truthful. Her fear and her panic about what had happened. Dude, this is why people hate lawyers, man. Yeah, that pause was good. But like, ah, oh dude, how do you, def like, like when you're a lawyer and like, I get it. Like, you know, it's a job, like that's what you do. But like, when you have to defend a killer, how do you live with yourself, man? How do you live with yourself? Just this fat stacks of cash? That's that's how you live with yourself? Like, yo, and I know this person literally fucking murdered a guy, but, you know, that that's what lawyers are. You know, that that's what lawyers are. Yeah, I, yeah, he completely, utterly massacred this guy. But hear me out, okay? Hear me out led her to tell different stories. Throughout this trial, you will learn more about Jody Arias. Although not everyone in Travis's family were devout Mormons, all of them were close. He in particular had a very strong relationship with his sister Tanisha, and as you can probably tell, a picture can say a thousand words. Much more about Jody. You will Dude, put her in a room with these people, man. Put her in a room alone with his family. Let them get their fucking due. Just let them go at it. God. Find that she's an articulate, bright young woman. Who's a very like, sure, it won't, it won't, like, really make them feel that much. The thing is, it'll give them a little bit of satisfaction. Putting her in jail, what is that going to do? Nothing. You know? Let them have a little bit of satisfaction. Talented artist and photographer. And so what would have forced her to have to take Travis's life on that awful day? In order to answer that question, we have to go back to the beginning. The bulk of the defense's opening was to paint Jody as the naive victim and Travis as the calculated Yeah, that's villain. what I was Being talking a about, member and an executive director of prepay legal, outward appearances would be very important to Travis. And so while he continued this facade of being a good and virginal Mormon man, he was inwardly dealing with his own sexual issues. And in Jody, in Jody, he found somebody who was easily manipulated and controlled. Please don't tell me they're doing this. Please don't tell me they're actually trying to spin a case for Jody that fucking Travis was the bad guy. They're actually doing that? Oh my God. Imagine how the family feels, dude. Like, just imagine that feeling that family feels right now. It is their job, but... There shouldn't even be a case here, man. There shouldn't even be a case here. Someone who would provide him with that secretive sexual relationship that he needed. They also mentioned that Travis was violent with Jody on several occasions, that he would fly into these sudden rages for almost no reason, and that Jody was terrified him of him. They defense. end their statement with Jody's latest account of how Travis was killed, which is now a case of justifiable self-defense. The attorney gets to the moment Jody was taking pictures of Travis in the shower. Jody accidentally drops Travis's camera. And as that camera was falling, that was enough for Travis because he lunged at Jody in anger, knocking her to the ground in the bathroom. This is, I'm not even exaggerating, I'm getting pissed off. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not, oh. Oh, dude, you're fucking joking me. 
or where there was a struggle. Jody's life was in danger. In just under a minute from the, in just a minute from this picture, we go to the next picture, where it's Travis's body is ah. clearly injured already in a minute. Now that very brief moment of time, a minute, is not the result of premeditation. That's his family right there. How do you live with yourself? That's the fucking. Uh, how do lawyers live with themselves, dude? The family's right behind you and you're sitting there spinning a fucking bullshit story that you know is bullshit. You, you know for a fact it's bullshit. Oh my God. Disgusting. In that one minute, had Jody not been forced to defend herself, none of us would be here. In that one minute, had Jody not chosen to defend herself, she would not be here. Fuck this you. This is not a case of who done it. The person who done it, the person who committed this killing, sits in court today. It's the defendant, Jody Ann Aries. And the person that- So why is there even a fucking court case, dude? Why is there a court case? There is nothing. It, there's nothing here. She done it to is an individual by the name of Travis Victor Alexander, a former boyfriend of hers, an individual that she was in love with, an individual that was a good man, an individual that was one of the greatest blessings in her life. And this love, well, she rewarded that love for Travis Victor Alexander by sticking a knife in his chest. And you know, he was a good man according to her. Yeah, tw yeah, exactly. 27 times. Self-defense. You know? Like so I'm totally self-defending myself, you know, this keeping... Ah, get away, get away, get away 27 times, making sure that you're dead, and after you're dead, still stabbing you even though you're dead. Self-defense. And with regard to being a good man, well, she slit his throat as a reward for being a good man. And in terms of these blessings, well, she knocked the blessings out of him by putting a bullet in his head. She took the knife and began to stab him when he was in that defenseless sitting position. This is very important to take note of. The prosecution just referred to this, the last photograph of Travis alive. Their argument is that Jody either asked him to sit down or at least waited for him to sit down before she began her attack. She knew Travis had to be in a disadvantaged position before she commenced her assault. And the prosecution's argument is that it was at this moment when Travis <clears throat> received a stab wound to the heart. He would have then began to rapidly lose consciousness from that point forward. He attempted to protect himself and escape, but he was soon overwhelmed by his attacker due to the rapid blood loss. The pool of blood- How- How do you sit next to her? How do you- How do you even sit next to her? Jody's version, on the other hand, has to be that Travis was shot first. The reason for this will also be explained later on. And began okay, explain to me in any way, it doesn't matter what version. You shot him in the head first, and then you stabbed him 27 times just to make sure out of self-defense? Or you stabbed him 27 times, and then shot him in the head out of self-defense? How? How in the fuck? the knife in his chest. He struggled. He grabbed the knife. And when he grabbed the knife, of course that resulted in more blood. I pushed the girl who was there. And I was able to get the better of her. And I was about to run out. Get out and go get some help. Except that I was then confronted by the guy. This guy started looking through my purse. Yeah, exactly. Now, right there. It's not Sorry, I didn't mean to push it. But like, self-defense. Like, you can... We, the, why is there a case? Oh my god, why is there a case? There's no case. Like, why, she would have called the cops if there was self-defense. She would have called for help if there was self-defense. Like, there is no fucking case. Oh, my God. How do you defend this? Dude, honestly, if I was a lawyer, if I was a lawyer, I would choose her and be like, put her in prison. Like, I, I, I would, like, bait her so hard. I'd be like, yeah, we'll make this case. We'll help you out. We'll try our best to make sure. You yeah, she did it. Life in prison or death penalty, I don't care. Just do something with her. This is exhibit number 248. No jury is going to convict me. Why not? Because I'm innocent, and you can mark my words on that one. No jury. Dude, she just wanted to be a fucking celebrity. Stop making murderer celebrities. Stop it. Stop making school shooter celebrities. Oh my god. Stop putting them on the news. Oh, fuck me, dude. That's why people do it. That is why people do it. Why do we keep doing this? I know this is, I know this is like early 2000s, but we still do it. We still do it. We give these murderers interviews. We give these murderers so much fucking content. Like I'm I mean yes, I'm reacting to it, but I'm just saying like 
like the reason so many people fucking kill people or go f for shootings is to be the next Columbine, is to be the next fucking school shooter. You know what I mean? They do it for the fucking celebrity. They, they want to be remembered as something. Stop doing it. I also ask that you mark her words while you're marking the guilty verdict for her premeditated killing. I don't know why, but they were Spider-Man and... At this point in the trial, the defense... Wait a second here. <laughs> but they were Spider Man. <laughs> there there is no out of context for this phrase. How do you put this in context? Had already detailed how Travis was physically abusive, sexually overbearing, and a deep-seated pedophile. Jody stated that she caught him on his computer looking at images of children, and that Travis had even asked her to wear Spider-Man underwear during sex. The next segment is Jody's supposed theory as to why Travis had such a request. I, I do know, however, that prior the year prior, he there's a child he was close with that really liked Spider-Man. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but he was. Dude, how I can't even fathom how pissed off that family is dude oh my god put him in a boxing ring dude put him in a boxing ring 5v1 just let them go at her dude oh my god that's so insulting it slipped it was kind of like the best i can describe it like when you go to catch a football but it bounces and you kind of fumble it a little because it it didn't slip and just drop it slipped and i tried to catch it and it kind of bounced a little and then fell on the ground and bounced and rolled onto the tile it fell first on the mat then it rolled right onto the tile the mat isn't very big it's just kind of right outside the shower at that point he got very angry and he stepped out of the shower did you just drop a camera in front of me did you just drop the camera when you're trying to take pictures of me naked you goddamn bitch how does that make sense how does it make sense? <clears throat> this is why her version has to be that Travis was shot first. According to her, it was all an accident. There was no intention to actually kill and Travis. But why? It doesn't make any sense. In any in any version, it doesn't make sense. If you shot him first, why did you stab him 27 times? What was the point? So there it is. Her explanation as to why she slit the throat and continued stabbing the man she had no intention of killing is that she can't remember. The trauma of the situation. She can't remember. That's it. These goddamn genius lawyers who are defending a murderer painting a story that the person she murdered was a pedophile. I don't know. Don't know what happened. No idea. No idea. Don't blame the lawyers. I will blame the lawyers to hell and back. Fuck the lawyers because they're the ones who made up this garbage story. They're the ones who literally told her to paint the fucking dead dude that she murdered as a pedophile. She's the one saying it. They're the ones who made the story up. The, the lawyers are the ones who made up the story. So just to abbreviate what she said, it was all to protect Travis's reputation. She asserts that she was so upset by the event that she became suicidal and would detail four different occurrences in which she tried but ultimately failed to kill herself. The first attempt was intended to be by self-inflicted. Their job is literally to defend a client. They can pick their clients, can't they? Can they not? Can they not pick the clients that they're defending? It all speak yeah, for itself. Yeah, dude. Destroy her story, bro. Let's go. Okay. Do you think you can help us? I would love to help you in any way that I can. Okay. That's not true, is it? Um, I don't know. I guess it depends on what help means. Yes or no? Were you there to help? I don't know. Were you there to tell the truth? No. That wasn't the truth, was it? That you were there to help him, was it? No, that was not the truth. You'll notice that Jody has a hard time agreeing to details that actually conform yeah. to her own narrative. The tone of the prosecutor puts her on the defensive, and she tries her best <clears throat> to avoid agreeing with what he's saying, even though the actual context of his dialogue correlates with her own defense. And, in fact, you were there for a different purpose. You were there so that he wouldn't get the truth, right? No, I was there against my will. There's nothing that the detective ever did to get you to say whatever it was that you said at the first interview, right? Not that I recall. Well, again, we're with a memory issue. Ma'am, are you having problems remembering what happened back on July 15th of 2008? No. 
So he didn't do anything then, right? Anything what? What are we talking about, ma'am? Are you again having problems understanding yeah, what's going on? Your Honor, if she can't understand this question, that's overall to me answer. I don't understand his question, ma'am. <laughs> I don't understand his question, and they freaking circle the dude like, okay, bitch. Anything what? What are we talking about, ma'am? I want to see this guy's face. Yeah, your Honor, if she can't understand his question, that's overall to me answer. I don't understand his question, ma'am. <laughs> Dude, even this guy over here is like, oh my god, okay, yeah, you couldn't understand his fucking question, all right. Detective didn't do anything during the interview to cause you to lie, right? No. Playing so the Papega card? started to talk about whether or not you had been in Arizona, right? Yes. You said no, you hadn't been in Arizona, right? That's right. That's an absolute lie, right? Yes. And the reason that, that you didn't want to admit to being in Arizona is because you knew that you had killed Travis Alexander, right? Yes. Ma'am, after that interview, you then... Had another chance to have a conversation with Detective Flores the next day, right? Yes. And again, it was a voluntary conversation, wasn't it? Yes. And it was the same situation as the day before, right? He sat down, he asked you questions, right? Yes. That's when you changed your story, didn't you? Yes. Because you did not want any consequences with regard to the killing of Travis Alexander, right? I wasn't concerned about consequences at that point. That wasn't my goal, so. Well, was your goal to go to prison? Not a physical prison on earth, no. I was trying to kill myself, I think. Ma'am, you said that many times, that you tried to I kill yourself, I was trying right? to kill myself, oh my god. Ma'am, we don't want to know where you live in, do you understand that? I'm just using that as reference, it's not small. Do you understand, did I ask you where you were living? No. We're clear, right? We do not want to know where you're living right now. Do you understand that? Dude, okay, sorry. You run destroy into her. Car. Yes. You're in a hurry, you right? Know? Yes. You want to get away, right? Um, I want him to not get close to me. Well, you want to get away. That's what's going on, right? I want him to not get near me. That's what's going right. on. And so what you do then is, according to you, is you then go in here and then you pivot, right? Or turn around. Yes. You have the gun. Which hand do you have the gun up in? Both. So um, you have it out like this with both hands outstretched? Yes. Correct? Yes. <clears throat> and so you have the gun outstretched and he's still not there yet, right? He's still in the closet. He's coming out the door as I turn. So he's at the door now, right? And according to you, he is on you when you shoot him, right? Not quite on me. I think the, the gun went off and then he impacted me, right? I think... Shortly after that. And in fact, according to your testimony on direct, he falls on top of you, right? He lunges at me like a linebacker. Jody used this linebacker analogy a number of times throughout the trial. The prosecutor like now asked linebacker. her to give a visual example. It appeared to have no real tactical purpose, but it was certainly a welcome and somewhat comical distraction for the viewers at home amid the graphic testimony. Um, as he was running, no, no, just, just show me. That's what I'm asking you to do. Yeah, where's Doggy show Boy? Me. Bring up Doggy Boy. Show me the linebacker pose. He got down. And well, show me. Show me the linebacker pose. That's what I'm asking for you to do. Okay. He went like that, and he turned his head and grabbed my waist. Just like that, correct? Right? Pretty much. And he grabbed your waist, right? I can't say it's just like that, but that's what I remember. Well, no, just, just, I want, without talking, just show me the pose. He got down like that? Like that. Yeah. All right, go ahead and have a seat then. After he came at you, ma'am, and he, that happened, <clears throat> did you go down? We both went down. And he's still not dead, right? Yeah. Definitely not. He's very angry. Can doggy he's very boy angry. be an inside joke? Afterwards, yeah, right? dude, fuck yes. it. Is he on all fours now? And of, um, and of course, why? <gasps> We gotta bring up why. He's on the side of me, grabbing at my clothes and grabbing at me. What happens then? I break away from him and he screams out, fucking kill you, bitch. And then what do you do? I don't really remember. I just remember. I don't remember anything at that point, so I would be speculating. <clears throat> so you don't remember a single solitary thing after that, right? The prosecutor for the next several hours would argue the improbability of that being the case. The memory loss caused by trauma would put Jody's mind in a state of disorganized chaos, yet her next steps were highly calculated as we all know. Even going by her own narrative, she knew exactly where to strike Travis with a knife in order to kill him. She also cleaned down the crime scene and deleted the photos from Travis's camera. This argument took over three hours to conduct and had to be explained through the scope of mathematics and science. On paper, True. it was perhaps the most damning part of cross-examination, yet it was so complicated that much of the testimony could have been lost with a jury. It was in fact the start of day 44 that had the most impact. It involved the time span between the two photographs- Why at 9.1? Uh, people like dislike this video probably uh, weird ass people who enjoy um, who probably think she's innocent there's probably weird ass simps in there who think she's innocent <clears throat> he needs arcade craniacs um, to defend yeah, her oh my god bro <laughs> that would just be the whole freaking thing oh my god she vented Oh my god, I'm pretty sure she's the imposter from Among Us. Just the whole time. So, then according to you, he fell on top of you, right? It was kind of on top, but maybe more to the right. I don't know, it wasn't directly on top of me. I was trying to prevent him from getting on top of me. And that's when the memory issue started, correct? Right? I'd say that. Actually, man, the way you describe that, 
It's impossible yes, for killing to have happened in that manner, isn't it? No, that's according to you. You'll notice no that Jody guys. evades the majority of the questions in this next segment. She starts to realize the argument put forward is making complete sense, and will at all costs avoid saying yes to most of the points laid out for her. It's as though she knows a fundamental part of her storyline is about to be exposed. We know that there's some action that is going on at 5.31.14, right? Something's going on, right? Yes. We also know that Exhibit 162 is 5.32.16, which is a minute... Two seconds. I'm later, not going to show the pictures correct. just in case. So you've now shot him. You've told us that the father's rolling in and that you have no memory. You still don't know where the knife is, do you? I don't remember a lot from that period. It could be. Right. But you told us before that period even that you didn't know where the knife was. Do you remember just telling me that? Uh, today, as I sit here, I don't remember where the knife was. On June 4th, I might have remembered where Ma'am, it was. Do you remember a cross examination that I asked you if you knew where the knife was? On June 4th, you said, no, I don't remember where the knife was. And so as you Get shot. Fucked. He Mr. played Aaron the trap Jr., card, dude. You, by necessity. <clears throat> Then have to go look for the knife, don't you? I don't know the answer to that. Well, you didn't have the knife in your hand when you shot him. That's, did, did you? The stand. Did you have the knife in your hand when you shot him? Same question. Overall. No, I did not. So that means that if you didn't have the knife in your hand, you needed to go get it from somewhere, right? I guess. I don't know. No, no, no. There's no guessing here now. Uh, if you didn't <laughs> have it in your hand, you just shot him. And you rolled away, right? Objection. Stand. You do then agree that if the knife, if you didn't know where the knife was, and Mr. Alexander didn't have it, it would take time for you to go find that knife, wouldn't it? Oh, I don't know. Dude, those freaking dudes, they like, nope, nope, no, 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 overruled. Like, everything they fucking say, they're trying to, like, combat it. It's like, nope, sorry, overruled, get fucked. Simple question that's before you is, do you kill her? That's the question. Yes! She has done something very bad. She did. And you have convicted her for that. You have told her that she is guilty of first-degree murder for that. But the question is now, do you kill her? State of yes. Arizona versus Jody Ann Arias, sentencing verdict. We, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn in the above entitled action upon our oaths, unanimous, unanimously find, having considered all of the facts and circumstances, that the defendant should be sentenced. No unanimous, no, no unanimous agreement. Signed for a person. Is this your true verdict? So say you want to know? Yes. It is ordered. The defendant shall be incarcerated in the Department of Corrections for the rest of her natural life with no possibility of parole. <sighs> not, I did. I'm not happy about that. Not enough. No, no, I no uh oh stinkies right now. No uh oh stinkies. I am pissed. No uh oh stinkies. Where the fuck is Doggy Boy? God, where's Doggy Boy? I need him out right now, dude. I no no uh -oh stinkies. I'm sorry. No stinkies. Like this. This is like 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 I'm 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 you know I'm always like weird about the death penalty. This is a situation. Please death penalty you know like she does not deserve life after this she kills someone and then tries to make that person out to be a pedophile stop redeeming uh oh stinkies it's inappropriate be the bigger man you know be mature you're adults in this chat right god damn it stop it god stop Stop. No. Do it once. Just stop. Oh my god. What do you, what is wrong with you people? What is wrong with you? Okay, fine. One time. One time. That's it. Are you happy now?